need you to step out with me. Um, I'm, no. You are under arrest. Do you understand that? For what charges? I just told you, trespassing from the city council meeting. meeting. Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean you can't be trespassed from here. Body cam footage was just released showing Rebecca Massey speaking at a city council meeting in Surprise, Arizona. She engaged in perfectly legal protected First Amendment speech, but at the direction of Mayor Skip Hall, she was illegally and unconstitutionally arrested and physically removed from the city council meeting. I've got to interrupt you here because... Okay, are you going to stop the timer? This is the public meeting forum that you agree to when you speak. Oral communications during the city council meeting may not be used to lodge charges or complaints against any employee of the city. Do you want to be escorted out of here? You're violating my First Amendment rights. Talking, Chief. Could you have somebody come down here and and, uh, escort Ms. Massey? Really, is that necessary? Yes, I think it is. In front of my ten-year-old daughter, you're going to escort me out for expressing my First Amendment rights. I need you to step out with me. Um, I'm no. Okay. I'm expressing my first. Do not touch me. Why am I being detained? Under what charges? Under what charges? We're going into session. Can they say, yes, you can speak at our city council meeting, but you can't criticize us and then just make the citizens sign something saying they won't do that, which is what happened here. The Supreme Court has made clear that one of the most precious liberties safeguarded by the Bill of Rights is the sacred promise to every American enshrined in the First Amendment that citizens enjoy the freedom to complain about their leaders. But surprise Arizona and its mayor, Skip Hall, broke that promise, arresting Rebecca Massey in front of her 10-year-old daughter for criticizing a public official at a city council meeting. And it's well documented on video. On August 20th, 2024, during the public comment portion of the surprise city council meeting, Ms. Massey spoke in opposition to a planned pay increase for Surprise's city attorney. As we discussed earlier, I have noticed an accompanying uh, e-session for this item to receive legal advice. Um, so if you want to see receive legal advice, I would request you vote to uh, recess into e-session. Very good. Uh, before we do that, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the speaker who wanted to speak on item number four, I believe. The call to the public. Oh, what do you call the public? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we had Miss Massey wanted to do the call the public. Am I the only one? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to take this time. Um, the item that I had requested to speak on earlier was during the consent agenda, item number six, as it pertains to the contract and of employment for the city attorney in the contractual agreement with Mr. Robert Wingo. There is a stipulation that state that says he can renegotiate his pay rate for an exceptional job. Cambridge University defines exceptional as something that is much greater than usual, especially in skill, intelligence, quality, etc., i.e. what is not expected of somebody in a role. I have concerns with allocating more funds to him specifically for a few different reasons. Point number one is, according to an article that was published in the Surprise Independent just shy of 12 months ago by Jason Stone, um, the city attorney is the second highest paid individual in the entirety of the City of Surprise employees. And at that time, he was listed at making about $266,000 annually. Where this becomes important is he is 11th overall in the entire state, and he actually only makes only $10,000 again, at the time of the article was printed, less than the attorney in Scottsdale. And Scottsdale has about 100,000 people larger than what Surprise covers. Recent months have uncovered numerous violations or alleged violations and and blatant disregard, I would say, for not only the Arizona revised statutes, the state bar rules of professional conduct, but also the Arizona state constitution and the Bill of Rights at the federal level. Um, Title 16, I won't rehash everything, but we are all too well and familiar with what took place during the election season and the violations thereof. City clerk is our elections officer. Nothing was done with the violations and the city attorney did nothing as far as that. Title 9 and 38 have conflict of interest. But Mayor Hall interrupted her remarks, scolding her for violating a city council policy prohibiting complaining about public officials. 
pieces of information and it was deemed that there was a conflict of interest. Title 39, there are numerous public records requests that I have open right now that are, quote, pending legal review that I am entitled Massey, to request. I've, I've got to interrupt you here because... Okay, are you going to stop this, the timer? This is the public meeting forum that you agree to when you speak, and I want to read this to you, that um, there are oral communications during the city council meeting may not be used to lodge charges or complaints against any employee of the city or members of the body, regardless of whether such person is identified in the presentation by the name or by any other reference that tends to identify him or her. That's all fine, well, and good, but that's so, a violation so that, of my First Amendment yeah, rights. Yeah, so that's, well, this is your warning, okay? A warning and for what? A warning for attacking the city attorney personally. Rebecca Massey insisted correctly that the First Amendment protected her comments. Mayor Hall didn't care, responding, do you want to be escorted out of here or are you going to stop talking? Massey stood firm on her constitutional rights and demanded the opportunity to finish her remarks. Um, this is all factual information. It doesn't matter. You're violating my this First is, Amendment this rights. Is, this is what you agree to when you first speaking. This is the form. It is unconstitutional, Mayor Hall. Well, it's not unconstitutional. It is. And if you're the gonna, Supreme Court if you're has upheld, continue, I could get up here and I could swear at you for three straight minutes, and it is protected no, speech no, you by can't. the Supreme Court. It is. No, you can't. Why don't you look at case law? No, you can't. I can. So if you want to be also the chair is engaged in debate, so point of order. Do you want to be escorted out of here? Do you want to be escorted out you're of here? You're violating my First stop Amendment rights. Talking. You are violating my First Amendment rights. That's your opinion. It's okay. not a matter of opinion. Do you want to be escorted out, Miss Massey? Because that's what's going to happen, and it's going to happen in the future also. Anytime you attack, that's any why you change the rules. Or any, that's why city, you change the rules. This has been on the back of this form. I understand, Mayor Hall, but that is completely unconstitutional. No, it's you're not. also engaging in debate, and so you should actually be anyway, yielding the floor to somebody okay. else managing. But she would never get the chance. Instead, Mayor Hall instructed a surprise police officer, Stephen Chernikov, to detain Massey and eject her from the room. Chernikov carried out Hall's unconstitutional order, detaining and then arresting Massey in the city council chamber. Chief, could you have somebody come down here and, and uh, escort Ms. Massey? Really, out of is that necessary? Chamber? Yes, I In think front it of is. my 10 year old daughter, you're going to escort That's me fine. out for expressing my she First Amendment rights. You. She can go with you. I'm not leaving. Well, I need you to step out with me. Um, I'm, no. Okay. I'm expressing my first. Do not touch me. Do not put your hands on me. Can you just step out with me? Right Do now? not put your hands on me. Come on out. Do not put your hands on me. Come out with me now before you get arrested. Do you understand? This are you detaining me? Yes. Do you understand? Why am I being detained? Under what charges? Under what charges? Under what charges? Okay, so I'll... Hey, I'll, I have personal property. Hold on. I have... You cannot touch me. Yeah, I know. She can go out there. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to go into E-session. Motion to go into E-session. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're going into E-session. Let go of me! Stand up. No, I'm not standing up. You are upsetting my daughter. Let go of my hand. I do not give you permission to touch me. I need you to stand up. Let go. I'm not standing up. I have personal property over there. Why am I under arrest? For trespassing. For what purpose? This is a meeting that is open to the public. You were asked to please stop. you stand up? I cannot because you have the handcuffs too okay, tight and my pants are falling down and I'm not getting up. Ow! Kevin, can you pull Brian? Yeah. Alex, there's a 104, can you, can you serve me a uh, keys unit over to the city hall? <laughs> yeah, I have the subject in custody for trespassing. Can you uncuff me, please? No. I have hair in my mouth and have I can't seat. breathe. Sit down. I can't breathe. Okay. Hold on. These are not coming off of you. I'm just going to lock these so that they don't get tighter on you. I can't breathe. Yeah, that's 10 4. Is it just you and your little girl here? 
Have a seat. You can turn around and have a seat. I can't breathe. Okay, have a seat. I have hair in my mouth and I can't breathe. Okay. My mouth is ridiculous. Would you like me to pull the hair out of your mouth? How's that? Can I have my water that my daughter had? My thing is still in the... You can't have anything right now. So you're denying me water? Yes. Can I please go check on my daughter? No. You have any other She's adults here with her? I do not. No. Okay. How do we get a hold of somebody? Adam she knows. She knows how to get a hold of somebody. She yeah, does. But uh, I am requesting you. I do not give you guys permission to have custody over my daughter. No, we're not taking custody over your daughter. How old's your daughter? Ow! Sit down. I didn't tell you to move. Stay my here. My are falling down. You, they're not going to go anywhere when you're sitting. When you're sitting there, your pants are not going to fall down. I guarantee you. You need to calm down. Take a couple deeper. I am deeper. not calm. I already told you I couldn't breathe. I, I know you're not out. calm. That's the problem. You need to take a couple deep breaths. <laughs> what was her alleged crime? Trespassing. I'm probably just going to walk her across. Okay. Um, you do not have permission to take my property. I don't need your permission. Get that through your head. Yes, you do. You are under arrest. Do you understand that? For what charges? I just told you trespassing from the city there council a meeting. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you can't be trespassed from here. But the only trespass on August 20th was against Massey's constitutional rights. Surprise places a muzzle on its residents at city council meetings, imposing a policy that bars remarks, leveling charges or complaints against any employee of the city or members of the body. This criticism policy violates the First Amendment. Criticism of government is at the very center of the constitutionally protected area of free discussion. That's Rosenblatt versus Bear, U.S. Supreme Court, 1966. After all, speech concerning public affairs is more than just self-expression. It is the essence of self-government. That's Garrison versus Louisiana, Supreme Court, 1983. But when Massey exercised her constitutional right to criticize officials at a city council meeting, a right high in the hierarchy of First Amendment values, the council criticism policy and Mayor Skip Hall ensured she left that meeting in handcuffs. That might be how repressive regimes treat government critics, but it's an affront to our Constitution. In the action of the Town of Surprise and Mayor Skip Hall, there is now a cloud of fear over the city. And other people now fear criticizing surprise officials, knowing that they now risk arrest when they exercise their constitutional rights. Mayor Hall pledged that anytime you attack any staff member or city official, you'll be escorted out. And he promised that's what's going to happen now and in the future. Rebecca Massey has now brought a federal civil rights lawsuit to ensure that that doesn't happen and to hold the town and Skip Hall accountable for their violations of the Constitution. In fact, everything I just said to you consists of the first nine paragraphs of that lawsuit, which I'll post at the blog linked below. She's being represented by the First Amendment Advocacy Group called the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. And the complaint is fantastic. I recommend that you read it. It answers the question just perfectly about whether or not a town or a city can do this. Can they say, yes, you can speak at our city council meeting, but you can't criticize us and then just make the citizens sign something saying they won't do that, which is what happened here. The complaint explains that Miss Massey operates something called the Grand Failure, a nonprofit organization that's critical of the government of the city of Surprise. Through the Grand Failure, which is a great name, Massey operates a website, thegrandfailure.org, publishing articles, petitions, and podcasts critical of the government of the city of Surprise. As they note in the lawsuit, her comments here about the city attorney addressed issues within the jurisdiction of the city council. They did not disrupt the city council meeting, but before her three minutes had expired and while she was explaining her opposition to the proposed city attorney pay increase, the mayor said, I've got to interrupt you here. Here's the problem. In a public body's public comment period, content-based regulations are permissible only where they are viewpoint neutral and enforced that way because viewpoint discrimination is impermissible no matter the forum. Viewpoint discrimination is an egregious form of content discrimination and is presumptively unconstitutional. Here, the council criticism policy prohibiting complaints about city officials and employees 
only permits two points of view. That would be laudatory or neutral speech about public officials, while forbidding a third point of view, which would be critical speech about the same officials. The council criticism policy therefore codifies viewpoint discrimination and is unconstitutional under the First Amendment, both on its face and as applied to public comments that are critical of government officials, as here. The complaint also makes a good point that the reaction of the mayor or city council members to public criticism cannot be the, quote, disruption that justifies restricting the speech of members of the public. The loss of First Amendment freedoms for even minimal periods of time unquestionably constitutes irreparable injury, according to the Supreme Court. And here there are a number of constitutional claims that are asserted against the defendants. This is an egregious case, and I'm glad that the body cam footage was released. I'm glad that this lawsuit is going forward. I hope to continue to stay on top of this one. And if you want to follow along, please subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at John Bryan ESQ, also the civil rights lawyer there. Remember, our rights don't end where your fear begins. Freedom is scary. Deal with it. Thank you.